What's up, everybody? Today, we wrap up the ASL round of eight. This is going to be a crazy match. Uh, Sulky versus Mini. Sulky, of course, the previous ASL champion. And Mini, uh, one of the scariest processes we've ever had in StarCraft. Uh, especially in this matchup. Well, really, especially in every matchup when I think the way he has dismembered different players. But he's one of the best, for sure, without a doubt. You know, we talk about people like Snow here. Uh, we talk about those crazy peaks from Rain. But really, Mini is up there with, like, Hero and Rush. He is always getting this deep into the tournament. Round of four is his playground. He's been to multiple finals. He's a champion. Uh, you know, I, it's hard to say who's favored here because this is really... Two of the best of the best. Yeah, it's uh, it's a tough one to call for sure. Um, Mini does have a very abusive play style. He's excellent when it comes to cutting corners uh, in the early game and getting his tech out extremely fast. In the mid game, he tends to use a lot uh, of DTs and high numbers, which is a little bit unusual compared to how the rest of the Protosses and the ASL approach the matchup. Um, and he's just got some great one base stuff. He's a very tricky player to go up against. Of course, Sulky... Uh, kind of the master at making the game look easy. Uh, very good at in any situation he's put in, basically eking out as much damage, as much potential, uh, whether that's going to be an all-in, a timing, uh, or, or just a, a full-on macro game. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, these two, like, they, they're meant to play each other. It should be a finals. Wasn't this the finals last season? Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, was, yeah. I mean, it's <laughs> the fact that they're fighting in the round of eight is actually in many ways not fair because they're actually like two of the big favorites coming into this tournament. So uh, it's it's going to be a wild match. Can't wait for it. Uh, yeah, let's uh, let's get this started. Video, guys. Then we're going to go to that interview. We never know when this scene's going to end, but it should end soon. And then we'll be going to that. And then our best of five. Oh, we didn't manage to do any of these transitions right for all the round of eight. Hello and welcome to the last match of the Round of 8 here at ASL Season 17, brought to you by Wellnew Life Ultimate Custom Prestige Gaming Chairs. Snow took a decisive, a perfect 3-0 victory over Biso in the third quarterfinals bout yesterday to move on to the second round of four match, with his opponent being decided here today in the final game of the Round of 8. As we wait for the match to begin, let's have a word with Solki and Mini. Hi. First up, Solki. You moved on to the round of 8 having defeated Mong and Bisu in the round of 16 without a single loss. Seeing how you've already toppled a household Protoss name, you must be quite content ahead of your match against Mini. Would you say so? I kind of wanted to avoid Protoss this season, but with how many there are, it's been rather difficult. Still, I prepared well and I'm confident. With a confident Sulky on one hand, I wonder how Mini is doing high. You defeated two Terrans in Royal and Barracks on your way to the quarterfinals. Bearing that in mind, the fact that you've, you've been playing against Terrans, I wonder if you were hoping to run into another Terran in the round of eight. In the end, however, you are meeting Sulky. How do you feel? That was my original hope, to play uh, play a Terran. In the round of 16, I didn't use more than one or two builds, 
So I was hoping to get a Terran here, but in any case, I don't think having to play a Zerg once is that bad. To be honest, the sooner the better. It would seem Mini is confident that the sooner he meets Sulky, the better his chances for the finals are. Looking at your 10 most recent matches against Protoss Sulky, you have 9 wins and only 1 loss on record. Having taken down such household names as Snow, Rain, Bisu and Mini, I reckon you must have been overflowing with confidence during your preparation. Can you tell us a little bit about how you prepared? I have been losing a bunch in practice, but it didn't shake my confidence, uh, regardless of how much I would lose. I consider prep to have been successful, and today's match should be an interesting one. An interesting one, you say? Mini is also not somebody to be scoffed at when it comes to versus Zerg. Mini, you've played a total of 17 extended series in ASL with 10 of them being against Zerg, where you scored 7 wins and 3 losses. Seeing how this is your first best of 5 this season and one against Zerg, I bet you've prepared a lot. I think best of 5 is better than best of 7, so us meeting here in the round of 8 is more favourable, I think. With this being the quarterfinals, I would say I'm rather confident. Let's now take a look at the head-to-head -head of our two players. Solki is in the lead with a 6-3 score. With you also having won last season, Solki, uh, your ZVP is at a 63.5% win rate. With that in mind, I am assuming you also have this psychological comfort or confidence going up against Mini. You do have good memories of the finals, don't you? Having won this much, it does inspire confidence, however you look at it. Still, I do not want to let my guard down. I'll try to do well. That's right. Mini is not an opponent you can be careless going up against. Yeah, I think he's a scary opponent, so I wanted to avoid him. I will have to play my best. For you, Mini, Sulky is somebody worth taking revenge on, seeing how he caused you all this trouble on the biggest stage of all, in the finals. With you also saying best of five is better than best of seven, do you think this is your most optimal chance for payback? Honestly, he's an opponent I hate running into, but if we are to meet, then the round of eight is more favorable. So with that, I do think today is an opportunity for revenge. How do you see today unfolding, score-wise? I would always achieve victory with ease having won the first map. If I were to lose the first one, I will have to steal myself mentally. So even if I lose the first one, I plan to take all the games from the second set onwards. Mini is saying he's focusing on the psychological aspects of today's game. What about you, Solki? Are you going to vie for victory in the first set? I've always had to go all the way to the rubber match. I somehow get the feeling that today might be no different. Sulky is already calculating a full set series. Let's hear some final words of resolution from our two players ahead of the game. Sulky? I'll show good games today. Can't wait, Mini? I'll do my best to go to the finals this season again. Got it. You're all waiting for the final round of 8 match between the highest and second ranked ASL players in Solki and Mini. This is surely going to be a real slobber knocker of a game. Let's get things going and see who's going to be the last player to join the semi-finals roster of the season. Alright guys, we're going to get into this match here. Uh, the map lineup will be Radeon, Troy, Neo Dark Origin, Blitz Y, and then Retro. What do you think, Tasis? What's your gut for who's going to take this? Man, I mean, it's hard to say. I, I do feel like Soul Keys looked really, really scary. Yeah. Um, I think Mini is definitely going to come in here with a lot of adjustments. He does also seem to prep very much for the player. Yeah. Not just the map or the matchup. Mm -hmm. Um. That being said, I don't know that Sulky has any kind of characteristic Achilles heel. Mm -hmm. No, he's not like a Soma who's or a Jadong who's known for maybe being like too aggressive. Yeah. Um, he's not someone who's, you know, like Queen who occasionally gets a little bit too greedy or macros too hard. Um, it's a little bit of a Goldilocks Zerg over yes. here, Tosis. Yes, yes, absolutely. He's, you 100%. know, it, he's just right. Yeah. Um, 
So, yeah, let's see what Mini's going to do. You know, Mini ha has had success versus him with some of these hyper-abusive all-in one-base builds, but mm -hmm. you can't really win a best-of-five with, like, one-base builds, right? That's how you steal a game yep. and do a rug pull on a player. What about what about you, Artosis? What are you thinking? Okay, I'm actually, like, I'm kind of going over it in my head, and the thing is, Sulky has the best build order rotation of any Zerg in the world, I think, by far, like you said. Uh... And then I look at Mini, I'm like, this is the best prep player in the world. He makes the best builds overall. Uh, and looking at the map pool, like he has Troy and two two-player maps to work with. In a best of five, I'm like, you know what? I can see Mini taking this. And then I, I'm just kind of thinking to myself, I'm like, the more games you add, the more likely I feel like it is that Sulky wins. You know what I mean? Like, if... Like, they played a best of seven last season. Sulky was able to pull it out. Like, you give him enough maps, I feel like he's going to grind you out no matter who you are. But on the smaller map sets, like, this is five maps, two two players with Neo Dark Origin and Blitz Y, as well as Troy. Those all feel like really good prep maps. I feel like uh, I'm actually leaning towards Mini, like, with three map wins here on those three, on those three maps, maybe. Yeah, you could be right. I think the weirder the map, the more opportunities Mini can try to take advantage of it. Um, it does seem like Mini's real strength is if he gets into a healthy spot in the mid game. I've seen him make like up to four, even six DTs, which almost I can't even believe it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but he's he's set up some pretty good tactical positions, so Sulky's going to have to be ready for that. Um, Sulky also it, it seems to know when to insert the weird pool timing build that will like win the game. Yeah. You now, uh, keep in mind we've seen many lose ASL games where he's like really cutting it close. Mm -hmm. You know, like going uh, for a quick nexus and you know a cannon that you could just barely get away with. So yeah. there's always the possibility. Mini, uh, sorry, Sulky does something weird like a seven pool mm -hmm. and just auto beats mm -hmm. it. So, um, should be some interesting early game builds from both these guys. I'm honestly super excited to see what's going to happen here. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, taking a look at the stats, it looks almost overwhelming for uh, <laughs> for for Mini as far as his uh, Protoss vs. Zerg, just how many big matches he's won in that. But, of course, again, losing to Sulky, uh, you know, somewhat one-sidedly last season. I, I don't know. I'm I'm just super pumped about it. I love watching Mini play Protoss vs. Zerg specifically because, you know, this is a guy that it's known that he act actually practices for these matches in single player more than in multiplayer. Like, he'll sit there and he'll get his build just right. He'll bring something with timings that you don't expect. And that can be so powerful. But if Sulky just randomizes his builds, it feels to me like Sulky actually... Because I've always had this idea in my head. I'm like, if I was an ASL champ, I would roll a die to choose my strats so you can't predict them. You know what I mean? Like, have have stuff built up. I almost feel like Sulky's like that, where he'll just be like, like you said, right? Like, I'll never forget that stupid seven pool that Light wrecked him when he did it, but he won the series and he <laughs> yeah. was happy with the seven pool. And it's like, okay, that's the type of psychopathic brain that you need to win ASL. You need to look at that and say, yeah, no, I'm happy that I did that. Like that seven <laughs> pool that didn't even come close to winning and I got bashed. It's totally good. I'm happy with my choice. You know, that, if, yeah, if you play Sulky like that, is, yeah. Oh, sorry. I was just going to say, Sulky's so good. It, it getting into a position that looks like there's no way to recover from, play from behind, and then still win. <laughs> mm. It's kind of insane. Yeah. Um, so with Mini, uh, I think this is a big moment for him to, to kind of get this out of the way. Obviously, this is the person that denied Mini from becoming a, an ASL champion again. You don't get a lot of uh, repeats with ASL champions within mm -hmm. a, a few years span. It's why what Queen did uh, several years back was such a big deal. Yeah. Um, but Solky shut him down. So this is Mini coming in here and trying to get his revenge. And, um, of course, Snow is awaiting the winner of this. I think no matter who moves on, we can be happy. Mini versus Snow or <laughs> Sulky versus Snow is going to be insane. Yeah, that that is for sure. We're going to go to Radeon for map number one. Uh, you know, this is kind of a big map overall. And, you know, four player, of course. So I think it's very likely we could see a normal game here. But we'll see if Mini has something up his sleeves, even for such a large map.
Okay, Sulky in the top right, Mini in the bottom left. Um, this is a big four spawn map. It is uh, probably going to be just some kind of fast expand build here to open yeah. this up uh, for Mini. For Sulky, I I'm really curious. I, I meant to mention this before we got into the um, the games themselves, but how much is Sulky going to rely on three hatch Hydra in this best of five as mm, well? I feel yeah. like he doesn't do it quite as much as some of the other Zergs, but it is a powerful build. It is a good way to just kind of shut a Protoss down before they can get to where they need to be. Yeah, you, you never really know with him. Sometimes he plays a cheesy series. You know, I always think of his strength as those bigger macro games. He's just so good mechanically. Uh, but, you know, that's that's why he's so dangerous is because literally anything can come out of him. Uh, but, yeah, they're cross spawns right now, so any rushes would be, you know, vastly weaker than they would be in uh, closer spawns. Uh, Mini maybe going to be going for a gateway expand here. But, no, he's not Looks sending a probe, like so maybe not. Okay. Dude, this yeah, is um, going to be that Nexus on 11 into 4. Yeah, it looks that way, huh? With no scout. So taking a little yeah. bit of a risk. Do you know the exact pool timing that just straight kills this? Like, does a 9 pool so, just auto kill this? I think a 9 pool. Sorry. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I think a 9 pool. I have to, have to double check. But it, it, it's. I think 9 pool speed can beat it. Yeah. You know, you have to also keep in mind you're in cross spawns. Like, if the Overlord gets right, like, let's say that he was at top left, he'd be in big trouble. Yeah. But I think if it's, like, over pool, even if they scout you right away, if you send five probes, you can just barely block the Lings from getting in. Okay. And the cannon will be out. So it's it's a little crazy. If I remember right, last time he did this build, he scouted after the forge was made. So it looks like he's made a small alteration. Mm -hmm. I was running this build when I was streaming on Twitch. Um, a bunch like right after we finished the last ASL because I was really intrigued by it. It's an interesting build. So for the uninitiated with like the nuances of fast expanding, why this build is so powerful is that it lets the Protoss skip a pylon because as the Nexus finishes, your supply is about to, to max out. Um, and so being able to skip one pylon and get your gateway and your gas up is crazy. Plus mm -hmm. it's a Nexus before a forge <laughs> or a gateway. So it's like a really powerful build. And, you know, in cross spawns like this, the Zerg isn't going to be able to do anything. Even with this opening as it is, the Zerg couldn't touch this. Yep. So right now Mini's looking very, very strong. Yeah, and, and small things like that, well, they sound like small things until you play a ton of StarCraft, and then you're like, oh, wait, I can save 100 minerals here and speed everything up by that much. It's pretty wild. Uh, you know, these optimizations, this is a big part of why Mini is one of the best players in the world. He's so good at finding these. He's so good at grinding these out into great spots. And as Sulky gets down, he knows exactly what he's dealing with. Uh, he did have two drones come out. The other one actually goes the long way to the third base. Very clever right there. You see, there's a lot of little tiny mind games going on, right? Mini was looking to block that hatchery. So he brought his drone around at the, the right timing, but the other direction knowing that that probe was waiting to block and it would move. The fact that he sees the layer start here is also a big confirmation here for Mini. It means it's not going to be any kind of Hydra bust. There's not a hatchery hidden at the natural or somewhere else. Um, one funny little quirk about this build is you do end up getting the cybernetics core in your natural because you skip that pylon. You can't, uh, you can't uh, tuck hmm. your tech away somewhere in your main. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is so far developing into a game that it looks like nobody's going to try to end it right away. Mini is uh, on a greedy build and it's working out pretty nicely. Sulky is going to be playing a little bit of catch up here as he's on three bases. Stargate goes up at that natural as well. He even has the second pile on there. <laughs> Nothing in the main base as of yet. Uh, and yeah, that Corsair is going to be out pretty darn quickly. One Zealot going across the map right now. Some more Lings being hatched by Sulky. And quite a quick Citadel comes down as well. Yeah. I want to see if he's going to be getting air weapons here or, or not. I'm just almost, uh, for my selfish purposes, kind of curious exactly how he maps this out. We did see in the past that when he did this build order, I think it was on Retro he did it against um, Bulky, or maybe that was against uh, Effort. I'm not sure, but uh, he did chuck out a lot of DTs. And that's mm -hmm. a very mini move here, is to basically go for... Big Corsairs into, you know, in the old days, you'd get one DT, maybe two. But many will get up to four or more. Um, and 
it makes for an interesting situation because you already um, the DTs aren't that good to fight with mm -hmm. uh, alone. They still do 40 damage. When you get a couple of them, they just kill everything. Now, I'm going to correct myself right now because there's a second gateway, and it's going to be Zealot Charge mm -hmm. or Speed Upgrade or whatever you want to call it um, with Corsairs behind it. Cool. So, uh, yeah, going to get that very fast with the plus one, no doubt, and maybe try to put some pressure on out in the map. Sulky, we saw throw down a Hydralisk Den, so it looks like this layer is going to be utilized more for Overlord speed uh, coming along more quickly and probably just into the, like, Hydra Lurker type of play uh, that we've seen occasionally. Not as popular as the Spire Opener. Uh, do you know why Zerg sometimes chooses this as opposed to the uh, Spire? It's a different style uh, and a different approach. Keep in mind that a lot of uh, Protosses try to punish the fact that you have to use the Scourge and the Mutas to defend. Hydras basically lets you sit back and turtle, kind of seal yourself off uh, from the opponent. Um, so it can feel a little bit safer. It does not allow you to create as many opportunities um, uh, for yourself on the other side of the map. but. If you can seal yourself off and turtle with Hydras and a couple Sunken Colonies and just tech up, mm -hmm. you're going to have a safe mid-game. And like we were talking about before, I think a lot of the strengths that uh, Mini has are usually somewhere in the mid-game where he mm -hmm. comes out and does a lot of damage. By the way, <clears throat> just a subtle thing here. Almost everything is inside the natural, yeah, <laughs> which can be covered by Corsairs. So there's almost no way to know what was coming here from Mini. Mm -hmm. um, and so only now is it going to be a confirmation that it's these Zealots. He set the, the very small number of Zealots out early to make it look like it might be DTs, but here come the actual speed lots now. Hey, they're getting on top of these Hydras really quickly. He's actually dealing a ton of damage to some of these, trying to hit the Overlords at the same time. Looks like there's just enough to force that back. Uh, he does start to engage the Lings. I'm not sure that he actually has plus one finished as of yet, and he will have to pull back for now. Uh, but Mini definitely doing a good job of kind of keeping Sulky busy, stay on his side of the map. Yeah, no Sungan colonies in sight, by the way. It's going to be just Hydra Ling. It seems like Sulky just barely has enough. I don't know if that plus one attack upgrade finished yet or not. I wish we could check. I thought I saw the Forge spinning uh, when they were leaving his base, but it did seem like a bit of an anti-timing. Like the, the Zealot speed got done before mm. um, the uh, at attack upgrade. Uh, you know, it's also possible he could have gone for armor. That's very not common in modern uh, StarCraft. Yeah. Okay, so how is this possible? He still doesn't have the upgrade. Yeah, it seems like he really optimized he something completely different from the plus one. Uh, you know, it, yeah. the thing is, the plus one, obviously, it's always good. But if your opponent is going to be on a more Hydralisk-based defense, a less Zergling-based defense, then it's yeah. not as important. So maybe maybe he looked at this situation and was like, yeah, I mean, there's, he, I, I don't think he could have predicted that that early. But he, maybe he looked at it and said, I don't think Sulky's going to be going Mutas against this build. And thus, he just decided to speed up the legs timing a bit. Yeah, I think you're right. Um, I've seen this a couple times where Mini does get uh, upgrades later. I kind of, I, maybe I just imagine that the Forge was spinning right away because it's so commonplace to do that. But yeah. instead, he's going to have a lot of speed lots out on the map. He's going to continue to be roaming here. He'll be getting that plus one attack upgrade a little bit later. I think we were going up to maybe even eight gateways. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it might have been nine. I think I saw a ninth one added up above the four that were inside the main. Uh, add that into the two that are already at the natural. So pretty heavy uh, powering here from Mini. Um, and again, Sulky so far is just going to stay defending with roaming Hydras. Look at the supply that he's actually been able to create so far. It's 116 to 69 supply. He still does not have that upgrade. Uh, which is, like, getting to be really funny at this point. That feels very late up here. Uh, but, yeah, it, and, it, you know, this is, like, I feel like Mini is doing a really good job of keeping this pressure on. And this is, like, the most Hydra-heavy, high-econ type of play that you can do as Sulky, right? You see him trying to zone these out the way he's moving back and forth. If you just look at the mini map, you can see Sulky's Hydra's army going back and forth. And you can see Mini... He keeps trying to find a way around it, and he has that second group on the right side of the map. That second group might come into play very strongly coming up here. Now, uh, one thing that uh, Mini did miss is that there's a hatchery being made in the bottom right main. Mm -hmm. He actually had Zealots down there to intercept anybody that would come down and try to make a hatchery, but unfortunately, he's not going to be able to block it. 
Um, the Zealots are now going to be coming in at two different locations. Ooh. Keep in mind, there were no sunken colonies, so this is really not defended at all. In fact, both positions looking extremely weak. The three Corsairs are going to come in now and start to take out a lot of these overlords. No this lurker eggs. I don't even know if there's a lurker upgrade yet. Mini doing so much damage. This is insane. The Zalts at the third base dealing a ton of damage. The Zalts in the natural dealing a ton of damage as well. Those Corsairs trying to get some kills. He does get that uh, evolution chamber, so going to prevent some upgrades there as well. I can't even believe this. Mini has set this up beautifully, and he, like, Sulky looked like he might want to attack, but there was tons of High Templars at home, so I feel like Mini was safe this entire time. It did seem like Sulky was going to set up to make a lot of mutas. He hasn't made them yet, or if he started any, it's not that many, because he had a lot of gas banked up back there. Um, so one thing about the mutas coming out is they can snipe the Templars. We see this a lot in StarCraft nowadays. You go for mutas and kamikaze on top of the uh, Templars and then let the Hydras clean up the rest. But Mini came in, did a lot of damage to those bases. In fact, I think he might be making lurkers. He might have actually ditched mm. this after the... Um, the Spire was scouted by the Zealots as they were hitting the Evo Chamber. So, yeah, he is going to ditch this. He's going to actually just try to turtle up and, and, and stay back. Now, Mini is moving across the map. He has a lot of Dragoons. He has a few Zealots in there for tanking. He has eight Psy Storms prepared on these High Templar. And he has an Observer. So this feels amazing. Look at that. He gets the Storms off of the High Templar that was getting sniped. Kills a bunch of Hydras. And he's going to get in here right before the Lurkers are done. No, it looks like they finished just in time. And he does have to turn around. Yeah, he's denied over there. This is a game where Mini is probably under the impression that Sulky is still backed into a corner on three bases. But it, it could not be um, or the opposite. The bottom right is filling up with drones. Now we're going to have this push coming here uh, towards the natural. There's lurkers, but I don't know if there's enough Artosis. Yeah, well, he picks off the Observer, so that was an important moment there for Sulky because 100% he would have broken through that little group of five Lurkers very, very quickly. Doesn't want to try to use uh, Psy Storms to just break through, waiting for that next Observer. It feels to me like Mini is about to break Sulky. Sulky's going to have to do something pretty desperate here to hold on. He's going to try to come in again. If Sulky can't hold this right now, he will lose this game. It doesn't look like there's any more Lurkers above this screen or to the bottom right of the screen. So it should be the final defense that's going to be cracked open here. Some more Lurkers are going to morph up here into the natural, but there's already Zealots coming on top of this. The Dragoons are going to be in range as the Lurkers complete. Uh, an attack here from the bottom isn't going to help Sulky at all. I think we're about to see GG, Artosis. It definitely does look that way. This is a big victory right now from Mini. Another great Psy Storm goes down. He's killing off absolutely everything. Uh, I think he may have lost his Observer there, but there's no Lurkers really left to speak of. No, another one comes up anyways. Killing Hatcheries, killing Overlords, killing Hydralisks. This is it for game yeah. one. That hidden base isn't going to do anything. Um, Sulky's been split open here. GG, game one goes to Mini. The really interesting opening, a very delayed uh, attack or armor upgrade. I almost feel like it was impossibly long. Like maybe he yeah. accidentally canceled or, or something. I, I couldn't quite make I think it details was, of it. I think it was a Mini optimization. I think he looked at this and said, you know what, with this build, I don't expect Mutalisks. If you don't expect Mutalisks, it's normally not a Zergling-based defense. It's normally Hydra-based. Uh, so you don't actually have to have plus one. Instead, he opted for the quicker legs. He kept the pressure on. Really well done from Mini. I don't know how he does it, but that was one of the most dominant PVCs I feel like I've ever seen without damage in the early game. Yeah, it seems like uh, Zerg thought he was going to come in and try to deny a possible expand, and then these Zealots just ran right around. And this was really where the damage was, was put in. Neither of, the of these two spots were safe. So Overlords were being hit, drones were being killed. He was able to dive onto the missile upgrade that was on the Evo chamber. Um, <clears throat> the few Hydras that were back here to defend were killed off, trading out almost no Zealots. The other Hydras were able to come in here um, towards, the, uh, towards their main and try to protect it. Eventually the Zealots were killed off, but it's almost hard to describe how much this puts the uh, the Zerg behind here. I mean, just so many, um, so much damage dealt here. And of course, with Templars and Dragoons behind that, you can very easily make uh, two rounds of Zealots out of all the gateways, and you've almost got all your Zealots back. Yeah, yeah, really, really well done. And uh, Mini going to take that first map.
Not even the map I was really expecting. I'm kind of looking towards these next more wild maps as the maps where I feel like Mini could really have labbed out something strong. So we're going to see if he has something crazy coming up next on Troy. But first, a quick commercial break. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everybody. This CVP is going to continue on. Mini with a very impressive opening to start this off. Um, managed to circumvent the Hydra aggression. Eat up on the drones, the tech, the main base of the Zerg as the Hydras had to retreat back home uh, and try to save all the damage that Mini was causing. And then Mini closes it out in a very classic PVZ fashion with a mass push of Zealots, Dragoons, Observers, and Templars. Uh, onto a Zerg that just doesn't have enough lurkers or sunken colonies to hold a, hold that position. It was a great game. It was it was really fun to watch. And now we're going to go into Troy. And I'm expecting two gate zealot out of many. We'll see if my prediction is correct here. I, I, you know what's going to be so funny if we just never get this. Nartos is just hell bent on how Protoss is supposed to play Troy, yeah. but the pros I am, I am correct. Just to make this way. completely clear, I am correct. The pros are wrong. Two gate zealot on Troy is broken. We'll see if Mini does it here against Sulky. All right. Tartos has a secret. The question is, does Mini know it? We're going to find <laughs> out now, guys, in game two. OK, 
okay, cross spawns again. Um, same exact spawns as we had mm. in the first map. Yeah. A mini here in the bottom left, Sulky in the top right. Before we get into this game, guys, we're going to do our quick plug here. If you want to support us, please, please consider signing up for the Patreon. It's patreon.com forward slash ASL English. We wouldn't be able to do this without your guys' support. And you get a little something extra with this Patreon. We have a little uh, pre-show. We do a little mini podcast that we have before each episode is released. Um, so you get a little something, something if you sign up and join oh, us. That's right. Thank you very much, everyone. And I uh, hope you enjoy today's episode of the Taste Dose's Secret Podcast. Uh, and I hope you enjoy just staring at Tasteless because I forgot to hit record. So <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to have to use my backup recording for that. So you'll just watch me sit in a chair and, I don't know, probably pick my nose. I have no idea what I look like when I'm doing the podcast. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I, I'm excited to see it. It looks to me like it's going to be a forge opener from Mini. So maybe he's expecting, like, a pool first build from Sulky or something. He just wants to shut that down and get into, like, a regular macro game. You know, it, like, let's take the geysers out of the discussion for a moment, Tasteless. Like, if you just take out these assimilators, right? The map layout is pretty darn good for Protoss, right? Like, if you look at it overall, there's, like, a lot of gas bases. They're pretty easily defensible and everything. Yeah, I mean, I I would suppose so. Yeah, I mean... Right? I, I think so, but I'm, I, I mean... Because I, 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 if you take out the assimilators, this is a Terran map. Like, it's just, it's crazy. Like, the, everything is so close, right? So, like, the thing is, right. that's the defining feature of the map, so you have to consider that. Well, he's going to cannon rush in this case, Artosis, so. Oh. Oh, no, he's not. I'm sorry. <laughs> Saw him run back Maybe there. Not. Maybe not. No. You thought two gate. I said cannon rush. We just can't figure out what Mini's going to do next here. No. Um, usually, when you see the probe loop back behind the minerals, that's a, a sign they're going to try to rush back there but you know some good players will send a pro back there because they know that the zerg might have to overreact and send their own drones and get slowed down mm -hmm. um yeah well I, to be honest with you i don't have a, a a great handle on this map i feel like i need to cast a lot more games on it before i can figure out exactly what's going on and, and how it works in each of the matchups because of the fact that it can be um transformed into an island map by destroying the assimilators that are the neutral assimilators at each uh, starting location mm -hmm. It's a, it's a lot to take in. Yeah. Well, I got news for you, Tasteless. After this cast, you have a maximum of three more casts of Troy, and I guarantee you it'll never be put in another <laughs> map pool because it is a pile of garbage. Uh, this is... <laughs> it's literally one of the worst, most imbalanced maps ever made. And uh, I, I look forward to... The, well, the thing is, I never look forward to ASL ending other than the great games we'll see, but I, in that way, I do. I can't wait for this map to be gone. <laughs> um. Note that uh, in this game, Mini was able to get his gateway out and his gas up before he even started that first cannon. Mm. Uh, and that's all because of the opening that uh, Sulky went for. So Mini, in a very mini fashion, very modern Protoss fashion, is just master at cutting corners and having the bare minimum at any given moment hold off what Zerg uh, can hit with while trying to get out as much. Oh, I'm sorry. That's two gates. Ooh, what? Yes. Oh. He knew yeah. two gate is the way to play. <laughs> <laughs> what? This isn't even the two gate you were talking about, Artosis. <laughs> Tasteless, that, you shut wild. your mouth, Tasteless. He's going two gate. Okay, he's getting the quick plus one with it this time. So this is like, we've seen actually like a two gate opener without the gas after Forge. Where yeah. you you just make like this weird amount of zealots and go across the map and you can catch your opponent off guard. It's actually like hilarious if they don't get an overlord to see that you have the second gate, how strong it can be. But here he's getting plus one with it too. So he's like kind of counting on a zergling only defense falling apart. Yeah, this is going to be a really weird plus one slow zealot uh, time and attack. This is so cool. Mm -hmm. So... I've seen some weird uh, maneuvers um, with one gate, you know, plus one zealot, but I don't think I've ever quite seen this with, you know, early plus one, then two gate zealot. Yeah, I haven't either. Um, but, you know, Mini is really kind of on the cutting edge of, of builds and, and, and figuring out solutions to come in there and um, punish. So you see the three zealots coming across the map. There's going to be a fourth and a fifth here soon. The three zealots doesn't necessarily tell you there's a second gate here. I don't know the timings of this in and out. Mm-hmm. Um, when plus one finishes, it's going to be a big problem here for the Zerg because plus one Zealots will uh, two-shot 
Zergling. So they kill a Zergling in two hits, which is insane. Yeah. It's a, it's a very, very cool plan, and it seems like he'll hit right before the Mutalisks is, is my kind of gut take on this. Like, I think that's the timing he's looking for is right before Spire finishes, he needs to get across the map. So I think what we're going to see is like a five Zealot push out or a six Zealot push out here. Uh because the spire is coming right along and if they have mutas like the thing is zealots actually take a while for mutas to kill just to throw that out there and also a lot of times you see corsairs first but a lot of lings being made they're obviously a corsair hasn't come yet so sulky has to be wondering about that and here we go the six zealots starting to walk across the map he doesn't have plus one yet but it should be finishing any time second cannons <laughs> made here just in case there's a counterattack. and behind this he goes for double stargate this is such a cool build here mm. for mini it's going to get that second gas as well. Keep in mind, when you're making, you know, this many Zealots, you're not spending your gas on anything. So you can actually bank up and, and go for double Stargate like this. Uh, and it can be pretty good. Now, more Z more Lings are hatching. But again, when plus one is done, it's going to be tough. It's going to be very tough for these uh, Zerglings to, to really deal with these Zealots in any kind of useful way. The upgrade's not quite there, but any second it should mm. be finishing. Dude, yeah, like that, that plus one is going to be so strong. There's a ton of Zerglings out right now. And there it is. He has it done. Plus one is done. There's one sunken colony in here. But yeah, these Zealots are going to fare so well against the Lynx. Look at this. Just starting to completely shred them. Yeah, he's doing a great job splitting the three Zealots over in the bottom. He busts the sunken colony. Almost all the, Zerg or the Zealots are still alive. Of course, there's coming out in pairs here. I would imagine that there's some Mutalisks being made right now. You couldn't really make uh, Zealots try to take this on. Now, with his slow um, Zealots here, he decides to try to target down the hatchery. That's going to pull the drones back. <clears throat> we see that um, he's fighting them as, as best he can with the Lings that are hatching. But, I mean, these Zealots are so strong. Again, many just like a build order god over here. Dude, he, yeah, he, this is this is something else, really. Beautifully, beautifully done. And he is continuing to deal a ton of damage. I think Sulky might say GG soon. Like, if he loses this hatchery... I, and again, Mini shows us that two gate is too strong on Troy. <laughs> Doesn't even More matter when you make him. As long as you make Gonzalez he, out of two gates, man, it's, it's, it's crazy. He's going to come back now. He's going to try to fight. Um, but it's going to be at a really bad angle. He's actually going to wedge these in the back like this, making it even harder to, to deal with. More Lings are hatching. This is a Zerg without a functional natural base. Oh, my God. And again, we know that there's Corsairs behind this. We haven't seen how many yet, but there's going to be a lot. Yeah, two Stargate Corsair. Like, are you going to even try to go Mutalisks at this point? I'm not so sure because he only has one geyser. Uh, you know, he has that base in that bottom right area that I don't think many has actually seen yet, so that's something at least. But as these six Corsairs fly up, it feels to me like they're going to just start popping Overlords, and Sulky is going to have no choice but to GG. Well, he's making a lot of Scourge, but I still don't know if it's going to be enough. Mm -hmm. um, there is a micro trick that's pretty modern where you can, like, flick the Corsairs to attack almost behind themselves to kill Scourge. Um, so Mini has that at his disposal as well. I think we should have eight or maybe even ten uh, Corsairs. They're going to be grouped together with a probe inside the group. Uh, armor upgrade here for the Scourge. Oh, dude, he lost okay, so he one Corsair. Out... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. This they, I, I don't see any way that Sulky could ever come back from a game like this. I mean, if you kill the Zerg natural plus that many drones... There's, like, very little army for Sulky. He's got plus one flyer carapace, but he's playing into two Stargate. So even the plus one flyer carapace I don't think is enough to truly do anything. And look at this, a really quick third base. He's just going to have a probe unload at the island. Um, that's the other thing that's crazy about Mini is he'll, like, sometimes take a third base off two or four gateways, which pretty much nobody else does. I love it here. In this situation... Like, you never yeah, see sense. this, by the way. There's no Templar archives or anything. Like, you're going Robo to get a shuttle to expand to an island because you killed a hatch with two gate Zelot into two Stargate Corsair. Like, I, you know, we, we see games from Mini that we've never seen before and we may never see again. Yeah, well, you know, it's funny. He, he went for the uh, Corsairs. He saw a lot of Scourge out on the map, so he knows this must mean that Sulky is <laughs> going to be making nothing but... Um, uh, Mutas and, and uh, a Scourge. Mm -hmm. So he just stays back and, and sets up for an island expand. He's going to push out a little bit later here. 
This looks He's so even bringing deadly, the shuttle man. With it. Look at the 11 Corsairs are out. I don't know if they have that plus one yet, but this should be more than enough to kill everything. Even with this beautiful Scourge flank, it only gets him down to four. And there's only like three mutas. You know, maybe with the Scourge, he can still do this somehow. But a Reaver is out helping as well. I didn't even realize. I was actually wondering why he brought the shuttle. I yeah. thought, like, okay, that's a little odd. I, you know, I, I didn't actually see the Reaver tech. This is kind of crazy. So the Corsairs are going to get cleaned up. Um, but the Zealots are already in here. Two more Corsairs are going to come up. The problem is the mutas, they can't kill the, um, the Zealots very quickly. Mm hmm so the, the Zealots can kind of move around unimpeded. They, they're going to be able to take out the Spire. I think we'll probably see Solky tap out here. This is crazy. This is looking so one-sided. I got to say, Mini has the ability to make this matchup look so easy and, frankly, imbalanced for the Zerg. Yeah. It's a wild thing. 11 kills on that Reaver. Insanely well done. All the timings, all the attacks. Like, I've never seen that. You watch more PvZ than me. Have you ever seen anything like that? I've never quite seen that build. It's like uh, gas fast, then just two gate. You let the gas accumulate. It almost looks like it doesn't make sense, but then you see the double stargate behind it and you go, oh, of course. Yeah, you have enough gas to then just do this. Mm -hmm. And of course, when you have that much gas, you can also make a robo and a reaver behind it. Uh, and it still maths out nicely. You just end up spending it a little bit later on. Yeah. Really impressive stuff here. Um, Sulky, unfortunately, is just not able to play the game he wants to play. Mini's prep is so good, it's so on point, that I don't really know what can be done. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I mean, how many more tricks does Mini have here? Yeah, yeah, this was very, very cool. And you can see him just trying to buy time with those zealots there before that plus one attack hit. Sulky with a single sunken, thinking he's going to have enough. Like, what a what a strange situation that Sulky had to deal with here. Like, how do you even prep Mini. to play against Mini? It's like, how do you prep to play against something you've never played against and you don't know what it is? <laughs> it's tough. Yeah, I mean, it's it's pretty insane. It's it's um, he's definitely showing everybody that there are still a lot of builds we haven't learned yet in the matchup. Now, uh, most of PVZ and ASL for a long time has been these very straightforward builds, stuff that Bisu basically showed everybody, you know, 10 plus years ago. Mm -hmm. um, probably 15 plus years ago, to be honest. But now, I mean, we're just seeing stuff like this. Like, okay, this looks like a really solid build, given what the Zerg was doing. Is this something everybody's going to be doing, or is this going to fade into obscurity, uh, depending on whether or not Mini decides to use this more often or not? Yeah, I don't know. I, I would love to uh, see something like this more often. You know, he did two very different builds between these two games. One was a very quick legs with no plus one. The other one was very quick plus one with no legs. Dude, he's doing half of Protoss builds and destroying people with it. It's wild, man. Um, well, we got to see if Sulking can come back. Right now, it is Mini up two to zero here. With such right. a dominant performance, Sulky barely able to even uh, do what he wants to normally do. All right, guys, we're going to jump to a quick commercial break. When we come back, game number three. Today's
Welcome back, everybody. Uh, man, I hope this is not a 3-0. We just had a 3-0 uh, previously, um, you know, with snow coming down on top and yeah. killing it. This is Bisu, but I, I want to have more games. Me too, me too. And, it, uh, you know, like, Mini has just looked so ridiculously prepared. It's He's looked so strong. In my mind, there's no doubt he's going to win. Uh, I hope that Solki starts to fight back here. Like, the thing is, Solki is kind of getting caught right now. Is it time to do something that can't get caught. And what I'm talking about that can't get caught would be three hatch Hydra Tasteless. <laughs> right? Oh, yeah. Is that not a build that would have been fine in both these situations? <laughs> yeah, it's time to take the, uh, <laughs> the game back from the Protoss and go to the Zerg root. Yeah. Who needs a layer? I look, I mean, it, it was probably worth it. Can he do it on the next couple of maps? I'm not totally sure. Uh, we need to see something here. Clearly, Mini has just prepped so well. Um, whether it was kind of a, you know, the, like, well, let's go with the last game first. That was just an ingenious build order that just came in there and cut Solki down so easily. But even in game one, it's like the fundamentals of Mini are just too good. Just continued to roam the map with the Zealots when the Hydras got out of position. Knew that Sulky was too greedy um, and wasn't going to have sunken colonies, so he was able to come in there and punish with the Zealots. Vinny just seems to have top tier mid game PVZ and, yeah. and knows exactly how to prep. Well, it, it seems to me that if you do what Zergs generally do, he's going to rip you apart because he knows what Zergs generally do. He knows all the holes within it. He has builds prepared to punish these very common optimizations. So it's time to turn that on its head as Sulky. Do a quick pool. Do a Hydra all in, right? Do these things where all of his fancy schmancy Zelok garbage doesn't do anything for him other than try to keep him alive. If anybody could come back from this, it would be Sulky. But I think what you said was really important, Artosis. Whether it's a, a, a three-hatch Hydra or something else, he needs to take control of the game again. He's the, a lot of Z, playing Zerg is just sort of being on the receiving end of stuff and, and gathering intel, trying to take the game to a certain place where there is no return. Problem is, is that Mini is so good at stopping him. But there are ways to play Zerg where you're just in their face, you're, you're cheesing, you're doing all ends, you're doing weird drops, you know, when they're on two base. Mm -hmm. We might need some stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I, I, I want to see it, and I think that Solki will be thinking along the same lines. I do think he's a player that can kind of switch it up a bit. He doesn't have to come in and do his exact plan, whereas with Mini, I kind of feel like he is the opposite of that. Like, you see sometimes... Like, I remember this one game where he had a probe when he cloned his probes off to the minerals that went behind the mineral, and he, the look on his face was if he was just eliminated from the tournament because it screwed up his build, right? Because he's going to be eight minerals late at that point. Uh, so, you know, I think that Solki can roll with the punches. I think he can switch it up here, and I'm hoping he does because otherwise it's going to be another very fast night. Okay, Soul Key in the bottom right, and he in the top left. Um, and he's gonna. No, <laughs> way. I love it. No way, dude. So, yeah, we we have not actually had Proxy Gate versus Zerg in forever. This was like yeah, pretty big right when Remastered came out, and it was really Rain who was doing it a lot. And even then, it was like still about fifty fifty if it worked. There's been some heated debate about how this is versus Zerg anymore because Zergs have just gotten so good at dealing with it. Mm -hmm. Is he going to see this? We, w wait. Holy shit. Oh my god. Dude. Oh my god. That's like what? really crazy. That's crazy. Wait. What? Where does he go? You can make stuff here? Yeah. Oh my, oh my god. god. I guess there is room for gateways here. Yeah. Oh my what? god. Tasteless. You didn't know this? Oh my god. <laughs> God. <laughs> Dude, oh my yeah god yeah 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 that's uh what 
that's going to be painful, but it's a nine pool from Solky. If Solky gets yeah. any inkling of this, he wins. And in fact, just a nine pool coming across, like, Look at this. it's going to get He's messy quickly. Yeah, you got to like, do it, right? <laughs> well, my pylons and my expansion. Just want to see what you're up to. <laughs> Well, he's gonna come down and see no, uh, no hatch. So he's gonna be a little bit sad. Did you see him? Did you see what? Did you see his face there, dude? When I know Minnie's about to scout something he doesn't want to see, I love looking at him. He like his yeah, head yeah. tilted to the side and he muttered something to himself in a very angry looking yeah. face. He, so he, he, he knows is, that this isn't. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, it's only one gateway, so it's not a two gate. I guess he might have made a, a second gateway had he scouted a hatchery. Yeah. I think you're right. I think that's what it what it was. But does he have to go like forge at home or something? Like how do you how do I don't you play know, this? I don't know. Artos just, Artos just like wants me to read like tell him what the hieroglyphics on the pyramid <laughs> means. I don't know. I, I, I don't know what's going on right now. Um, does he make a second gate or is it a forge? Let's see. Okay, that makes way. Okay, you you got to take some sort of risk here with it, right? Like he's trying to de delay this uh, with the probe. If the Lings make a beeline for his main, maybe he sends his first sellout in, right? Because Just to be clear, guys, yeah. he has no idea what's happening still. Yeah. <laughs> he still doesn't actually know that there's no expand. So I want to see Sulky's face now when this gets here. And he's like, wait, what? Yeah. He, well, he'll know where the gate is. He knows that it's down that little hallway. Yeah. He already loses one drone, and he might lose a second here. Yeah, loses a second. So already pretty good damage, honestly. But... This forced the Lings to turn around, which is what Mini really needed here more than anything. Yeah, he's also forcing a sunken colony up here. He's going to try to run back. You want them to have to finish the sunken colony. Uh, it looks like he is going to get trapped here. Uh, some pretty good micro there from Solky, so he will pull away from that sunk. He's bringing this uh, Zealot back to that gateway. And I don't know, maybe he has a third one about to pop, and maybe he can just barely hold this off, but... Sulky knows exactly what's going on at this point. He's going to try to come in and get more drone kills again. He gets another one. Two zealots are out. You can, you can basically put the zealot in between the pylon here, and it's like a little hallway. Mm -hmm. So it's not even clear that he's actually going to be able to kill this gateway right away. Um, so this is still rough. I mean, there's been a lot of workers killed, but the Protoss has no real... Um, there's, there's, it's not a good position, just to yeah. put it bluntly, um, from him. You can kill drones, but you're still on one base. Um, well, he's, is being made. I, he's go ahead. playing against six drones. Like, six drones is True. a very... That's that, that's very, very small, right? Like, this is something that you will have at, like, 30 seconds into the game. <laughs> and we're four minutes in. So, like, it's it, Sulky's position is not what I would call necessarily enviable as far as his economy goes, but he does have the double hatchery. He now has map control. Mini is in a situation where taking that natural could be really tough. He is teching up in his main and holding zealots on the ramp. So I guess he's going to play some one base here. Yeah, and you know, Mini, I still will say he has the best one base play in the world. Mm -hmm. But um, what kind of game is it going to be exactly? You no, know, he's... He's had some success in the past with like a, a two gate zealot pressure into Reaver a build that I, I've seen him beat several good players with, but I don't know what you want to tech to from here. Obviously, this wasn't, uh, you know, ideally going to be hatchery on 12. Wow, it's going to be a two gate robo build. Mm -hmm. Probably, it could be either with Dragoons or with speed lots. I've seen both. The Dragoon one is less common. But sometimes the Dragoon one can be stronger because, you know, the configuration of the army is a little bit different. And I, I just don't know how much gas is banked up. I've never. This is going to be one of these games we'll probably cast once like this and never be able to go back to it again. Yeah, yeah. It's such a wild, wild situation. Now, he actually slipped a probe out, by the way, in the back there. He made a, a pylon to jump it, and he just missed the Overlord again. Somehow, he, dude, he has, like, you know the, the, the superhero uh, Daredevil? Yes. Mini's probes are all basically Daredevil. Like, they can't see the Overlord, but they sense that he's there with, like, <laughs> dolphin sounds or something, and they just avoid it. It's crazy. Oh, the Ling run by. This is going to be the Dragoon tech, too, by the way. So, he's going to go for the Robo. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, you I don't know that, that he's doesn't kill that. There is no so. way. What? What is he? 
Does oh. he not know what can kill what? What? What was that? I can't believe he targeted that. Uh, but the Dragoon's yeah. going to push those Lings back pretty easily. There is a Sunken on the way. Five Lings, uh, five uh, Zealots, rather, coming down to try to hit this natural. Now, there is a Spire um, being made here. This does beat this pretty badly. Um, he's not going to switch off onto the, uh, the, Z the, the Lings here. He's going to kill off the Sunk. And then basically try to find refuge behind the pylons. Oh, man. Zergling speed finishes up. I was going to say, if it's slow lings, I could see the, the Dragoons kind of being microable and, and usable here. Uh, but, yeah, with this many speedlings, it feels like he's not going to have a real ground army. And if he just stalls out until he has Mutalisks, that's it. That's game. Yeah, Mutas will just beat this. You will never have enough Dragoons to take on the Mutas. I got to say, I, it's such a thought-provoking build, by the mm -hmm. way. I mean, think of how long we've had this map, and nobody's done this. Yeah. Nobody's even thought to try to run down there and just make the gateways. I would be S rank right now if I had just known about this last year. <laughs> like, about making gateways even. in there? Tasteless. Well, if you make yeah. it against Terran, let me tell you, we all check, so don't. <laughs> just, uh, oh, is just that so right? Does oh, everybody... yeah. Dude, yeah, so I have funny. gateways I've made there every day. Every day, gateways are made there against All me, right. man. Oh, funny. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I didn't realize it was here's, common in that match. Here's what you do, Tasteless, actually, is after your initial rush, you send your probe down while they're micron against Zots, and you make DTs out of that area. It's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, this game's going to end in a second, guys. Push is going to come out. There's just no way to, to have enough. Um, Anti-air to ever deal with the uh, the mutas that are coming mm -hmm. out. Now, Mini is making a cannon. I mean, he's playing this out about as well as he could. Yeah, I still... But, um, even then... Yeah, look at the Scourge coming out. He's going to try to target down the Scourge, because uh, if two Scourge will kill the shuttle, and then he doesn't have anything left. Oh, man, but yeah, four mutas. Like, I... I, there's just, there's no way, man. <laughs> he gets the mutas on top of this Reaver. He's going to take the Reaver out first. Then he'll start working on the Dragoons. Uh, the Zergling's coming in to help out a little bit as well. Mini doing his absolute best here, trying to target everything down. But the Sunken Colonies are adding way too much damage against these Dragoons. Yeah, and now he's going to get that closure, Artosis. He's going to go back there and get that Robo. Finish the job. GG, a frustrated Mini loses game three. Dude, he's so angry. No, that is he, that is one base all in didn't work. I've never seen someone so angry <laughs> that a literally a one base coin flip build didn't work. <laughs> Dude, really? It's coin flip. Like Solky went nine pool and he had no idea what was going on. He still smashed it. So it's like, well, I mean, oh, Mini, God. you needed him to go hatch first to win with your gamble gamble. <laughs> Why are we this upset about that? Oh, it's so funny. It's true because the emotions are very real right now. Yeah. It's like, it's like, why did I get lucky? Damn it! <laughs> it's like, wait, wait, dude. Like, you have to, you have to be okay with losing that anytime they go pool first. Like that, that's the trade-off for the power of that free win that you get sometimes. <laughs> dude, it's so funny. <laughs> um, man. Well, I mean, it, it's it's uh. It all comes down to the fact that that was not the build that, that counters this build. Yeah. So, uh, Sulky played it safe. You know, I was talking so much about how this is going to be a, a proxy uh, a two gate, but it's not your standard proxy two gate. You know, this was uh, had a little extra touch there. The, um, I don't know. I don't have much else to say. It was a cool, cool build. Fun game for mm -hmm. sure. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, it, it seems like Mini might want to go back to just, you know, and the, the stuff he was doing in game one and two. It was neat to see the way he tried to pull that game back, too. I think it was a really good choice. If it hadn't been Mutalisk, he might have been able to do something there, right? If you're trying to go, like, two hatch and drone up into a third, or you're trying to go, like, two hatch Hydra Ling or something, I think he probably kills you. So, cool ideas. Doesn't work this time. We're going to go to a quick commercial break, and when we come back, set number four in Blitz Y.
내 무게가 나 담아줄까? 하루만 이 의자에 몇 시간 이고 싶어 알고 싶어 너의 커스텀 값 만들어봐 이 의자에 꿀려 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 Welcome back, everyone. We're going to go into game four. It's been a wild best of five so far. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, a very devastated mini loses that <laughs> game three with his coin flippy all in build <laughs> yeah. and is very salty about it. Never been so angry about a coin flip, man. <laughs> he's like a it's guy so that funny. put all of his money onto red and it came up black. And he's like, no, <laughs> how could it be? This was a sure thing. It wasn't a sure thing. <laughs> It's, it's like, no matter how you look at it, it's like 45% win rate. You know, like, what are we doing? Oh, uh, my God. It's man. So funny. I love it, though. I love, I love, the emotions are real. It means that you care and everything. But, like, in this particular yeah, yeah. case, if you're going to gamble, like, you need to have the right mindset for that, I think. Well, oh my God! Yeah, we see a lot of fans saying, you know, two losses, then three wins. These sulky fans thinking that he can come back. It's possible. You know, sometimes these builds go wrong for you. I think if Solky continues to do things like pool first or, again, a Hydra Rush, anything that gives him some control of the early game, a lot of Mini's builds will fall flat. Yeah. What? Uh, now, suddenly I can't remember what map four was. But Blitz I'm Y. I'm excited to... Okay, Blitz Y. I mean, this is another map where you could do something weird. You could. I, um, I think he should play it standard. I'm telling you. I think he should really just oh, play agree. standard. He needs if a I standard was PVZ. advisor, I'd say so. Yeah. But we, we, we do his, see him do in best of fives and best of sevens almost always one game where he'll do two gates in his main, a two gate zealot pressure reaver all in. I don't know if he'll do it here or not, but let's keep that option on the table. All right. Well, again, why. if he does that, re re retro might be a better map to do that. We'll see. Okay. Um, yeah, Sulky and Mini. Uh, Sulky just one game away from getting us to that game number five where he would actually have continued the reverse sweep onward. Uh, Mini will do anything to just end this series here, now. Let's see what it's going to be, guys. We're going to go to Blitz Y for this map as this series continues on.
Okay, Mini in the top. Okay, in the bottom. All right. Uh, I, uh, yeah, I, I do hope that he plays something kind of standard. Something just came to me as well. The first game he did Nexus first. Okay. Right? Remember that? Right. right. So a lot of times I think it's good to set the tone in game one. And by setting the, the tone at a Nexus first that's not busted by anything other than a ridiculously aggressive build uh, that, you know, won't win against anything else. That is something. Oh, wow. He just he just was yeah, angry about something Mini's there. Face? Yeah, he's angry about like something. Oh, he went at, go to the right his probe sat at 98 minerals like for that pylon. It was out there. So like he had <laughs> something that wasn't optimized on the patches. Dude, I, I do that too, actually. When I'm sitting there at 146 yep. minerals for five days, Tasis, while I wait for my, my money to make my barracks <laughs> so, in the center of the map. There's nothing worse. Dude, it, when it's four seconds late or something, you really feel it. You do. But uh, oh, anyways, yeah. I, just back to what I was saying, like um, the fact that, and that's a nine gate, by the way. Uh, so nine gate, he, he wants to put pressure on. But uh, he went with a nexus first. Which makes you, as Soul Key, maybe think, okay, I want to go hatch first a lot. And then he's doing stuff that punishes that, right? And I think that that's, that's where he's a little bit angry, where it's like, yeah, he, he wants to force Soul Key to play these uh, more economic favored games so that he can, he can put pressure on that way. But Soul Key, once again, going with the pool first. Yeah. The, um, this game going to be uh, more similar to... We've been usually casted in PvZ the last couple years here. It's going to be the gateway pressure opening. Uh, it's going to be gate on nine, like Artosis was saying. So he wants to try to come out here and, and force out as many lings as possible. Um, if the Zerg makes too many lings, then you run back and defend. But otherwise, you try to punish. Occasionally, if you can, try to wedge the Zealots. High minerals are in obscure spaces. By the way, nice pylon block here. Oh, it's going to slow everything down just a little bit. The lings will stay uh, to make sure that that does get canceled. Mini pulling back with his probe. He does have that Zealot way off to the left-hand side, so that's kind of a hidden one. And, of course, you don't know the exact second he made the gate, right? So, like, you might not know it, that that's out there. Yeah. Was it a probe or a Zealot that was off on the far left-hand oh, side? Oh, I thought that was a Zealot. Maybe I'm wrong. Oh, I think... Yeah, so when you see six lings, you have to send all your zealots back and defend. So he has a second okay. probe to scout on the map. That's what he's got doing you, here. Got you. Yeah, and they now, are out. Sulky he's... is. No, go ahead, Tasis. <laughs> I'll okay. shut up. <laughs> um, uh, he, he, Sulky is so good at handling this situation specifically. He's so on top of it. Mm -hmm. uh, he knows exactly how to split the lings. He's going to send all six up into the main. He isn't making more Zerglings behind this, by the way. He's droning. Um, so far, Mini's handling has been pretty good. It's not that easy to Protoss here because the Lings are just a little bit faster. So if the Zerg is really on top of it, um, you can basically just play keep away, slow workers down from mining, mm -hmm. uh, and just delay everything overall. I have to say I'm a little bit surprised because I've seen you know these pool first six Lings go across the map against Gateway first all the time. And every time... Like, I, whenever I cast on my casting channel or anything, I always oh mention God. that, like, you're supposed to put a Zealot and Probe on the ramp so they don't get into your main and then defend with your other two Zealots in the natural. So I'm surprised that he's let these up here because now they've killed two Probes. And this doesn't feel very good for Mini, but he is sneaking a pylon down there. He's going to just cannon rush. Oh, my God. This is, like, this is such a weird way to approach this. This is something people used to do like a long time ago, and it's yeah. just viewed as bad because they should just know what's coming. Um, but it might actually work here in the ASL round of eight. Keep in mind that the, the hatchery cannot see these cannons. Yeah. Very, uh, very if the crucial. Lings try to, if the links were to try to come down there, you could send the zealots up in the main if you were in the right position. So this hatchery is going to die. The lings are coming out across the map. Now, hold on. There's, I think, only one cannon being made. Two. There are two. All right. All right. No. One that's going to finish. Excuse oh, yeah. me. That's what I was trying to say. Um, if the second one finishes, yeah, I think it's done. But look at this. Now the lings are going to be pulled over here. He might barely have enough zerglings, but then what's going to stop these zealots that are making a beeline mm. across the map? 
What an interesting play here from Mini. Really trying to punish Sulky right now. The, the two uh, cannons are done. More Lings popping out. He's making so many Zerglings. There's very few drones in this game right now. Uh, but the Lings will get up, and they will save this hatchery. So a good save there. But how much damage can these Zots get in the main base? I don't, I don't think know they're, they're going to get that get much them. either. Yeah, yeah. It looks to me like everything is kind of not working for Mini once again. Yeah, the gas is going to start um, for Mini, or finish, excuse me. These four Zealots really can't do that much. You know, this was an idea that seemed pretty cool. I think you needed more cannons to make this work. People used to do stuff like this forever ago. Um, they would have to have way more cannons to make it work, which is why it didn't seem like a good idea. Now these links are just going to run right into the main here. There's no cannon in the main as well. These are speed oh. links, so it's even scarier than the first time they got in there. Oh, dude, this is so bad. I think we're going to be going to game five. Like, I Sulky, think so, Arto. Yeah, Sulky looks really good here. There's still Zealots coming down. There's not a lot of drones, but the fact that these Zerglings have gotten so much done, the fact that there was a failed cannon rush, the tech is super late. Layer's already done here for Sulky. And look, oh my god. The economy of mini falling apart right now. Yeah, and it's really tough to get back to where you need to be here. I don't think there's been a spire made, by the way. It seems like minis um, at least slowed that part down, but the zealots are going to be cleaned up. Um, yeah, there's no spire at all, but there can be one here pretty soon. And let's keep in mind the core just finished. The stargate hasn't started yet. There it is. It it, it picks up over in the main. Minis in a really bad spot, and he lost a lot of probes back there. Mm -hmm. There's even a Zergling still in there somehow. <laughs> oh, my God. Three kills on that thing. Uh, I, I don't think it'll get any more, but, like, seriously, this was this was insanely well held by Sulky. I'm surprised. Like, I get it, though, right? The two cannon rush on the left-hand side, that must be why he brought the probe out. And then he did the counterattack. But, so, like, if, if Sulky had been droning at that point, I could see Mini getting insane damage. But Sulky was just, like, on top of the right counter. Just keep making units, and you're going to be fine. And he absolutely was. So double Stargate is, a, uh, I think, a pretty smart approach to this, considering where the Protoss is at. Mm -hmm. By the way, isn't it incredible that he still doesn't have a full wallon? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. He still has not walled himself off entirely, which is wild. Sulky made enough Zerglings. He probably could have overwhelmed this spot, but I think Sulky was just assuming that that would be plugged up by now. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, you know, with Sulky going into Mutalisks here, I think leaning into the double Stargate could be a smart way to do it. Because even though Mini's playing from behind, he could end up hard countering the Zerg's air and maybe winning the game from there. Do you think he's actually going to, though? Because I saw an Evolution Chamber and a Hydralisk den at the third base. So, like, is he actually going to go Mutas? Or is he just getting, he like, the right. standard couple Scourge? No, you could be right, Artosis. It's possible it's the minimum number of Scourge. I, I think that usually when you see the Evo Chamber like that for a way that this game uh, has been, uh, a lot of times it's it's not just for the uh, the, the Spore Colonies. It's mm. just to get a Hydra upgrade. Yeah. But we'll see. We'll see. It, it, a lot of times it could be hard. Even if like it looks like it's one thing, it can be made to look a certain way, and then they do something else. Uh-huh. Because uh, it doesn't cost Zerg that much to just make the buildings. So. Mm. <laughs> um, but... Yeah, I mean, the first Corsair is out. This one's going to be hit by Scourge. Oh, nice maneuvering. Oh, yeah. Will it be able to get all the way back home, though? I'm actually surprised he didn't set two of those Scourge out for a flank, right? Like, normally in a situation like that, you send two after the Corsair, and then you bring two out onto the map a little bit more to catch it when it tries to run home. Uh, but doesn't right. try that. There are some Mutalisks out, so you, you, you were right on that call. He did end up making some Mutas, and those are going to help to push these Zalots back, but that plays into Mini's double Stargate. Yeah, exactly. Um, so if he gets enough Corsairs, and ideally if he gets plus one attack, I don't know where that is along here. Um, he can probably win this fight, but three Corsairs are going to drive that back. Both sides have to be very careful not to overextend. Mm -hmm. If the Zerg loses all the Mutalisks, the game's probably uh, going to be over. Yeah. Um, Corsairs are still being pumped out in, in pairs here. And from the Stargate. He is skipping that plus one air attack, which I think is fine because it's already been switched into Hydra here. Hydra Ling coming up right. across the map. There are five Mutalisks. Obviously, a lot of gas has been spent on these Corsairs and continues to be spent on them. In fact, uh, a cannon for anti-Muta, but there's so many Hydras coming up. I actually think Sulky's just going to bust the front. 
Yeah, you're probably right about that. One of the weaknesses when you go for a double Stargate Corsair is you don't get your tech and cannons up in a timely fashion. So sometimes a straight up a mid game Hydra push yeah. will end the game. Yeah, yeah. It, it, there, like, Psy Storm is going to be so late in a situation like this that just massing Hydras is going to be a pretty strong move. The Corsairs come out, they grab an Overlord kill, so that's kind of nice, but Sulky's still not quite supply block, going to walk up. There's only two cannons here. He's going to dive on them. The Zealot and Probes are already in position to try to push him back and buy time for the rest of the cannons. Yeah, another step in here. He's going to hit that cannon that's on the outside. Probes are going to fall. They can just tank a little bit of damage, but eventually they're going to be able to get through here. The Hydra's going to take out... Oh, my God. Some of these Corsairs are so low on HP. Only one... No, two cannons are up right now. And honestly, I don't know how many more probes the Protoss can... Yeah, that's going to be a GG. I was going <laughs> to say, I don't know how many more workers he can afford to you know, put out in the front to sacrifice just to keep them alive. Now, Mini is having the worst possible thing that can happen yeah. to you in a best of five is you're up two games... And then they start to turn it around. Yeah. When it you goes know, to game funny five, man, that tempo is in Sulky's favor. Oh, yeah. And look, I mean, uh, Sulky, um, actually, let me, let me go up from Minnie's perspective. Game one and two were beautiful. They were so well done. Game four and five were kind of cheesy and clunky. It is crazy to see what Minnie's capable of in a competitive match. Like a delayed cannon rush on the third base. This mm. is like basically stuff that bad players do. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it, because it has no place in, in a, a tournament of this caliber, people like Sulky aren't looking for it. And it almost worked, by the way. Yeah. It was close. Like, uh, if he hadn't made that many lings at that time, he would have lost that hatchery, and that would have been a huge victory there for many. Uh, but Sulky, I think he was just like very on top of making extra units instead of drones. A lot of people look at that and say, oh, I only have like 11 drones right now or whatever it is, right? And and they'd be trying to refill that drone count a little bit, but he knew that Mini was not done. He still had more tricks up his sleeve and shuts it all down. Really well played game from Sulky once again. Yeah, beautifully done. Um... I got to say, every game, Sulky's just on the receiving end. <laughs> we have really been almost entirely casting this best of five from Mini's perspective. Yeah. I don't know that there's any other way to do it because everything Mini does has been so crazy and so different. And mm -hmm. so um, it just dictates how the whole game's going to go. Yeah, well, that's that's the type of game that Mini likes to bring. You know, we both kind of thought he should play a more standard game there. Maybe that would have worked out better for him. He opted not to do it. Retro is going to be our final map. We're going to game five to see who the final player to get a seed for next season to join that round of four is going to be. Will it be Soul Key or will it be? Are we switching to Mini? No, we're just going to zoom in on Soul Key. Or will it be Mini over there on the right side? We will see after this quick commercial break. <laughs> Today, 메시가 되고 싶어. 알고 싶어. 너의 특별 할인값. 만들어 봐. 네 의자에 꿀자세. 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 
So hold on to the highs while you're all right Cause you know you're gonna come down Just a matter of time and you will find Everything comes back around Comes back around, comes back around Back around, comes back around Comes back around This is it. One player moves on. The other one is knocked out of the ASL. Snow is waiting in the round of four to face off against either Mini or Sulky. All right. Uh, who do you think, Tasis? We're going to map five. We're going into retro. Taking into consideration everything. The great builds, the, the mistakes, the, the flow of the series right now. Who do you think takes this game five? And it's so hard to say. Uh, I think it's going to come down to what Mini wants to do. I think if he just does a Forge expand and doesn't do anything crazy after it, I think he can take it, right? So you're saying Sulky's going to take it? Yeah, well, that's <laughs> the thing. Mini may do something really weird. Okay. Like, like seeing that we had uh, a gateway expand into, like, gotcha, gotcha gamer cannon <laughs> rush out of... Out of Vision range of the third hatchery is wild to me. Yeah. I mean, out of all the players in ASL, many will, will really just go about anywhere, get a win. Mm -hmm. it, it's impressive. At the same time, when it backfires, you look foolish. Yeah. So, I don't know, man. Let's see what happens. I mean, retro is a map where there's a lot of different ways to approach it. Um, and again, I mean, you know, is Sulky going to do something odd? Will, will he do any kind of early quick pool? Let's not forget, I think Mini's bread and butter expand build can be countered by like a seven pool or a four pool Zergling Rush. Don't laugh at me, your toes. This is true. <laughs> it's not my most hype, uh, not Tasteless. my most hype closure. The Arturos. king of equivocation, man. I need <laughs> some jigsaw. I need some jigsaw voice modulation. Be like, no, now you must choose who will win game five. <laughs> All right, next time I just fart in the mic instead. <laughs> um, both players are on the right. Mini in the top, Tolkien in the bottom. So, um, so who does win, Tasteless? I'm, I'm calling you on it right now. Who wins? Give me a name. I think Sulky's going to take it. Oh, the way this I thought for sure you'd say the fans, and I would explode laughing. But, uh... Oh, nice. A <laughs> game is off here. So By the way, guys, um, um, I want to do one more quick plug here. Patreon.com forward slash ASL English. We appreciate you guys. We love you. Thank you so much for keeping this alive for so long. How long have we been doing the Patreon now, Artosis? It's been like years, three years or years. something. Years, yeah. No, yeah, it's been longer yeah. than that, I think. It's It's been a long time, man. They canceled ASL a while ago, uh, the English cast. Yeah. And it's, it's just great that we've been able to continue. It's it's my favorite thing, man. Like, this is this is, this is is the tournament. Like, this, I hope it goes on forever. I think it will. It does so well uh, in, the, in the Korean scene and really in the non-Korean scene as well. We get sick viewership watching this. Everyone loves ASL. And I mean, you can see why. Look at these games. It's it's amazing to see, and these really well prepped matches, dude. I, this is the right way to play StarCraft is to have, like, I do love weekend tournaments and stuff too. But this type of thing where it's like, look how prepped Mini is. Look at these builds we're seeing. Look at Sulky have to go pool first every game now because he knows he knows that <laughs> Mini's Mini's playing out of his skull against regular expands. Yeah, it's fun. <gasps> Tasus, is this a two gate? Oh my god, I thought it was just a normal gateway expand. A normal. Okay, so, <laughs> uh, now, here's what's crazy about this. We've seen Mini 2 gate on this map before. We saw him also do this on Eclipse, but normally he makes the gateways in his main. Mm -hmm. Now, you can still expand with this. Uh, the oldest, there was a really old, it's basically defunct, I would say, as far as build orders go, but it used, there was a period where Protoss would make the two gateways as part of their wall in. Um, but it's just not that good. This is going to be a real pressure build coming on here. Sulky's already responding correctly. He's not taking a third base any, or sorry, he's actually going two hatch in his main? Yeah, what? I, I think he just needed to make another hatchery for the larva's sake because this probe was blocking him for 150 years at his natural. 
okay? <laughs> like, the finals is already done. Somehow Sharp won because that's how yeah. long this was blocking him, man. They had to they had to play the finals in a different studio because that probe was not moving from that hatchery location. And the older viewers died. They're skeletons <laughs> yeah. now. Dusty corpses. As we wait for that hatchery to finally get thrown down. <laughs> um, so, a couple ideas. First okay. of all, with two, two gateways, you can keep putting pressure on. You could get all the way to his ramp, but if he gets Ling's speed, this game's going to get especially weird. Right now, this is looking like a game from somewhere like 21 years ago. Yeah. This is so bizarre. One base Zerg versus, I mean, it is a one base Protoss because there's no second Nexus. So it's kind of these like these gateways out here, kind of in a weird location. Split the Zealots up. Now, when you have the gateways out here, the Zealots come out a little bit faster, but the pylon's exposed. Yeah. And uh, he did get speed, by the way. Speed is on the way, just to make this clear for everyone. He's just producing lings nonstop. Speed upgrade is coming. Like, he's made a lot of Zerglings. There's no vision on the map for Mini. As far as Mini knows, Sulky has a hatchery at his natural back at home. Right? Like, there, he just he doesn't know. He has no vision of anything other than his natural. Now, if Mini just made a line of Zealots and, like, somehow intuited and made, like, a forge, would this game basically just be his? I mean, he'd be in very good shape. What you don't want to do right now as Protoss is leave your base. Yeah. If you know they're on two hatches, you go, okay, well, what am I even... There's nothing to rush, right? Mm -hmm. oh, oh, my God. So, he is going to make the Nexus. He's got half of the picture there. Will he get the forge? The Nexus is good. He's got his Zealots sitting in an area where the Zerglings can't really surround them. There's so many Zerglings coming across the map. This is actually insane how many Lings are out. And is that a forge? Oh, no, that's the second pylon is what that is, or the fourth pylon, truly. Uh, but yeah, he just continues to make these zealots. Oh my god, if he walks any further out, man, he's going to get flanked. Oh, he's screwed. Watch this. Sulky's going to come up and flank these. No, he doesn't go. He doesn't go. Oh, I think that might have been his, his moment. No, he's really making it look like he doesn't have that much. I think he knows if he overextends, the opportunity is going to be lost. He's going to just send four up. Look at <gasps> this. He's faking it so hard. Yeah, he is. He's like, I'm going to get your probes, LOL. LOL. Oh, he gets three speedlings inside. That is scary. Dude, look at this, the counterattack. Oh, my God. Sulky has pulled the wool over Minnie's eyes. Minnie is going to be shocked here as Zerglings come up and start to surround his zealots at his natural. Yeah, they're going to come in, but the zealots are going to come right back around. The links can get up into the main. It would be huge. There's already two in there doing a little bit of damage. But Mini comes back. Okay, he Orlings walks are being back across the map. Yeah, he hasn't he hasn't lost that much yet. He's saved the probes for the most part in the main base, but a lot of lings coming up to attack. Very good drilling, but we see a lot of probes starting to explode. He's lost six, seven, eight probes right now. Oh man, this economy just falling apart at the last second. Only six probes left on the map. Could not want a cannon more right now. There's no forge up. Protoss is, is completely and totally not in control of this game. The Lings are just going to keep coming in here. Uh, I think Minnie's moments away from being dead. In fact, he kind of recoiled in his chair. Yep. I think realizing there's really no way to recover. This is a such a losing position here. And there's a chance that he's going to lose all the workers in the main and still get broken at the natural. What what a crazy game to finish this on. Mini once again trying to get fancy and Sulky just saying, what what if I make units nonstop? And it seems to be the counter. GG Sulky to another round of four here. Mini, unfortunately, it seems like he's developing a real uh, thorn in his side here in Sulky. That is too bad. You know, Mini started out with, I think, some of the best PVZ we've ever seen really imaginative pvz but he closed it out maybe being a little bit too fantastical uh he didn't have you know an, an ordinary build it was it was another kind of odd cheesy play again i i, I almost fear many more as a player leaving the series but i think it was a not a good way to approach the best of five mm -hmm. he just got more and more eccentric where he already showed that if he just plays a macro game he can win wow Wow. Uh, just a, a wild series. Really enjoyed that. The variety of build orders. Sulky, I think, really at the end, uh, figured out what was going on with Mini. He just produced a lot of units to be able to hold these weird pressure timings that Mini was doing. And this baiting. Dude, the four lings running up, that was crazy.
Because the fourlings yeah. running up, you're like, oh, okay, good trick, Sulky. Okay, you get those in. That was good. That was good. You know, you kind of give that to him. And then you say, that's, now I know how much he has. He has a hatch at home. He's making some drones. Maybe I put pressure on. And then the counterattack that came in. So strong. Yeah, and when these lings get in there, you know, it's too much damage. The problem for um, Mini in this game is he doesn't know if the Zerg's expanding or not. This was a Zerg that was on one base for a long time. There was a third hatchery being made because eventually the minerals just accumulate. Um, but when he got in here, right here, these probes were killed off. It, it was just too much. Keep in mind, this was eight drones versus 19 probes right now. Yeah. But the number got down so low, it's really hard for the Protoss to recover. Keep in mind that, you know, you can make workers out of two and three hatcheries really fast. If Protoss has one Nexus and loses this much, see, now he's down in workers. Mm -hmm. It's so hard to recover. If you have that type of worker count and you can hold on, like, the game is basically over for Zerg. So, you know, a lot of great tactical plays and mind games and baiting going on here from Solki, showing why he's a champ, showing why we've always thought that he's one of the best Zergs in the world. Is he going to start a new reign here like we saw Queen doing, you know, years ago? Are we going to get a couple championships in a row for a player that's not Flash and is not uh, Queen? We've been saying it for a long time that Sulky sometimes just looks like the best player in the ASL. By the way, we're going to have him versus Snow. Oh, my God. It's going to be so great. Mm -hmm. Interview time, guys. Let's see how Sulky's feeling. The fourth and last semi-finalist of ASL Season 17 has been decided as Solki launches a counter-offensive and advances on. Congratulations. Thank you. Solki, the iron wall we've come to expect with a, with a mental fortitude. Despite dropping the first two games, you did not falter and you showed a great performance. Before the match, you said you were expecting this to be a full set series, and indeed a full series we had, with you coming out on top in the end to move on to the round of four. How do you feel? I did say it would probably go to game five, but I was actually hoping it wouldn't. And we're here once again. You know, I kind of felt I was winning throughout. And I had confidence going into the last set. The first two games didn't go according to how I had prepared, so I was very flustered and I decided to change things up from what I had prepared from the third set onwards and improvised. And that seemed to work. In the first two games, Mini kept running rings around you with his zealots. But regardless, you did not seem too phased. You kept on smiling. What was going through your, head, or through your mind at that point? I thought, wow, he really prepared well. I thought it was his preparation that was getting the better of me. And that made me think playing according to what I had prepared wouldn't work. That was a good move and also luck was on my side, which was what let me win. You managed to launch a counter-offensive from the third set onwards where you went for a 9-pull as Mini opened with a proxy gateway behind your main. Did you expect this to be the timing where Mini would go for something like that? To some degree, I thought it was possible looking at the first game as well. So I went 9 pool. I was still kind of flustered. I, I, I kept thinking about it, I was flustered, and I thought, ah, what the hell, I don't know, try this. I think I did well to expect him to be eyeing to go for a robo. You countered the robo with mutalisks and claimed a victory. You then went for a 9 pull again on the 4th map. Was this you looking to respond to Mini's moves? I'm wondering as to the, the reason you chose to go for the 9 pull back to back. Well, it's because I won in game 3. In game 4, I just got a hunch I would win today. Because I think my micro was better, so having won game 4, I knew I would be winning today. Having stopped him once in the middle, you cut drones and you kept making links to keep your opponent in check. It seemed you were sufficiently confident in your moves at that point. Yeah, my, my hands worked well today, so I thought that if we went into a multitasking battle, I would do well. 
And that's what I went for. In the last set, you said you felt victory was within your grasp. I wonder what exactly made you think that. I managed to scout him first, with the Overlord. That's when I felt I would be winning the game. I pondered what build I should go for in the last set. I actually called Shuttle before the game and he suggested I go Overpool. If I had gone for something else, things would have gone awfully wrong. So thank God for that. And in the end, with a Zergling all-in, you defeated Mini once again in the round of eight here and advanced on to the semi-finals. Looking at your record with the seasons you made it into the round of eight in mind, this is your sixth season where the series of the sixth season in a row where the series went the distance. It really seems nothing can shake your resolve. And armed with this mental strength, you are now meeting another strong Protoss in Snow in the round of four. Having to play two extended series against Protoss back to back like this has to be draining. Now that I think about it, I do still have builds that I did not use here. I am confident that I will be able, I'll be able to use them as is. Because I haven't revealed that much today, I have confidence going into the semis. They're both Protoss, but Snow is clearly different from Mini. Uh, what is different about Snow in your view? He's one of the best Protoss right now. It won't be easy. I'll have to try and uh, do well. Once again, uh, with a showing straight out of the TV drama, uh, Solki delivers in the round of eight. Many fans will be curious to see what you bring to the table in the round of four and whether you can once again make it to the finals. And many people came to the studio today to see this performance of yours. Do you have anything to say to the fans? I bet a lot of people were getting nervous when I was down 0-2. I will try to develop myself more and have a good showing in the round of four. I would like to thank YSC, Stork, Best and Shuttle for helping me practice. Uh, thanks to the members of Pangchi Club or University for cheering me on, also Gamst from Pangchi. Actually, there is not much to thank him for, but uh, thanks anyway. <laughs> Okay, once again, congratulations on advancing to the round of four. We will see you in the semi-finals. Thanks for the interview. Thank you. And that does it for our chat with this season's fourth and last semi-finalist, Solki. What a hell of an evening, guys. Yeah. Man. Well, Joseph. Yeah. Well, I mean, is that <laughs> all you're going to say? Is a hell of an evening? Yeah, I guess so, Taste. It was a pretty hell of an evening. Now back to you. Uh, yeah, Sulky with the reverse sweep here, doing a great job, uh, really figuring Mini out. But he has a completely different opponent in this next round, in this round of four, right? Snow plays completely differently from Mini. So that's going to be a really interesting series to see how Solky adjusts there. I think that that's the, the better of the round of four matches as much as I love Sharp, as much as I love Hero. I think Snow Solky, that is a fun one. Yeah, and, and I think all the things that caused Mini to lose here, Snow is incapable of doing. Snow doesn't step into these weird uh, bounds that Mini will go to in this matchup or other matchups. I mean, Snow's just a straight up macro Protoss that knows how to push. Um, and no. honestly, Sulky did look not so great in, you know, kind of traditional PVZ, uh, as we would understand it, you know, going into mid game and, and late game here. So he's going to have a tough opponent um, hitting Snow here. Yeah, uh, these are a couple of great matches here. We have the, the golden ratio. Thank you, David Kim. One Terran, two Zergs, one Protoss. Uh, and our first match, of course, will be Sharp versus Hero. I definitely think that Hero is heavily favored here. Uh, it's a best of seven. I think he's going to have enough games to grind out whatever Sharp brings. But, dude, I'm hoping Sharp has been playing the best ASL of his life. I know he's been in the finals before in season one, but, like, this is the best Sharp we've ever seen by miles, in my opinion. And I'm, I'm a big yeah. Sharp fan. So I, I want to see what he can do, but I do think Hero is going to that finals. Bit of a dark horse here with Sharp doing as well as he did. But look, if he played that well and got to the round of four, let's see what he can do against Hero. Hero, uh, much like Sulky, is one of these insurmountable Zergs. It's hard to figure out if there is a weakness and, and uh, you know how it can be exploited if he comes in here. He's been one of the most consistent players in ASL. He's always looking very good. When Flash was active, he was oftentimes saying that this is maybe the smartest player to talk to and play against. Mm-hmm. 
And of course, our other match, as Tasteless likes to say, the Battle of the Glasses. It's going to be Snow <laughs> against Sulky. Uh, and I'll tell you, they can really see those screens. This PVZ going to be amazing. I, I can't wait to see what Snow plans because I think you can look at what Mini did and how Sulky responded. And like, there's things to be learned there, right? Like maybe some of those early pressure builds are good. Trick Sulky into making heavier units early game and then play a more turtled uh, macro oriented game. I don't know. I, I feel like there's a lot of opportunities for Snow to learn about how Sulky's approaching the game right now. Yeah, this is going to be a fun one. I cannot wait to see uh, what Snow's going to do, how Sulky's going to be prepared. I don't think we really have a taste of Sulky's late game, by the way. These are all actually fairly short PVZs. Um, so it was either, you know, Sulky uh, able to stop Mini from doing what he did or, or Sulky got ran over in the mid game. So mm -hmm. uh, I hope for some very, very long and dramatic late game PVCs for that. That's right. Uh, this is going to be a great round of four, guys. Thank you very much for your support on that Patreon uh, thus far. And can't wait for the round of four. Anything else from you, Tasteless? We love you guys. Take care, and we'll see you in the round of four. Bye-bye.